Hey guys, it's Fish Aussie here, and welcome to episode 20 of my Southampton series. Yeah, things aren't looking too good. As you can see, we are currently in the relegation zone. We are in 19th position. And basically, since the previous episode, where we had only lost two games since the start of the season, we've now only won two games since that episode since the live com against Watford. Things are, are very, very dire. We're in dire straits at the moment. And um, I'm very close to actually being sacked. Um, if we have a look at the board confidence before we get into the transfers. Um, the board are disappointed with my man management. I've had a couple of meetings, I think two meetings, with the board. Um, however, we've still managed to keep our jobs so far, but um, our security is very insecure. And I think the end could be near, unless we pick up some results. Uh, but if you look at our fixtures, of course, today's live call will be against Reading in the FA Cup fourth round. But then after that, we've got Arsenal away, Tottenham at home, and Man City at home. And uh, that's basically, they said they'd give me a month, the board that is. And the month basically runs out on the 19th of Febru uh, February. So... Yeah, as you can tell by my voice, I'm a little bit disappointed with how this series has gone so far. Um, albeit, very much down to my own negligence as a manager. I feel like I'm giving a, press, a bit of a press conference here. Um, but I, in my first season, or well, second season really, I sold the best players of the team basically, and that, that's on me. Selling Mane, selling Rodriguez, selling Wanyama when I did... Of course, he's, he's back now, but back then, he was a much better player for us. Selling those guys has really, for lack of a better word, destroyed this team. I know I, I kind of replaced a few of them. You know, I brought Zukovic in, not Ricario, but the other one, Andrea. And, uh, yeah, then they got snatched up or poached by uh, release clauses and such. And it's kind of happened again. And, um, during January, we'll get into that in a second. And, um, yeah, we've lost, we've lost some good players. And then we've also had to sell a good player. Because he just wouldn't sign a new contract, basically. And, um, even when we were doing well, um, in the, you know, first third of the season, um, he just wasn't interested, um, in signing a new deal. So we had to let him go. You guys will probably know who that is, as... You know, you can probably tell by my voice and why I'm so, you know, I'm not depressed, but really disappointed with how things have gone. Um, we've brought some, you know, decent players in, um, but it's always hard to lose that special player that you've always liked. Um, so we'll get into the transfers here, and we'll get into the history. It's been quite a busy January, I'm not going to lie, and um, yeah, if you go over here, we first of all sold uh, Gaston and Gil Ramiro for 4mil, so we took a big loss on him. We sold him back to River Plate, um, where he'll go back to Argentina. We then sold uh, Kasuke Honda for 90000 to Stad Renard. Uh, Kazoa was also sold to Bologna, looking back on that. Um, probably wasn't the greatest idea to sell him with what happened next. Cohen Myers, I mentioned his release clause in, I think it was either the previous episode or the... Uh, pre-season episode. Um, yeah, Real Madrid and... I want to say Dortmund, but I think it might be Leverkusen. So I think it was Real Madrid and maybe Leverkusen both put in 41 mil uh, up front. 41 million pound release clause activators. And uh, yeah, he went to Real Madrid, obviously. A little bit baffled by it, though. I mean, he's going to replace... Um, Modric, because um, that was why they were after him in the first place. But um, they have some really good central midfielders. I won't go into it, but they have some decent regens already. So spending 41 mil... Um, yeah, well, he is, he's a world-class player, Myers, don't get me wrong. Um, but interestingly enough, he wasn't actually performing that well for me. Well, he kind of was, but um, recently he his form had taken a, a, fair, a fair dip. We then sold Bernard to Corinthians for 5.25 mil. Um, just kind of wanted to get him out of the club. 
We're still paying about 17000 of his wages, which is, you know, obviously very disappointing. But, yeah, another hit and miss there with Bernard. Just never really did anything. I think he maybe got an assist in one game, and that was I was quite happy with that. Let's have a look at his average rating here. Okay, as you can see, he played four. Oh, he didn't play too poorly in those 14 games. Three assists, yeah. But then this season, he started five. Well, he played, sorry, five games and got a 6.62. So it's time for him to leave. The next player is the guy I was mentioning before. Simon Roger Katembwe, my favorite player of the series. We brought him in when he was 16. And, um, yeah, we sold him for 40 mil up front to Schalke. Um, and as you can see, we only brought him in for 2.4, but consistently he was playing over a 7 match rating. Even this season, he was playing a 7.44. Um, and like I said, he just would not um, talk contract with us. And yeah, basically something else happened. I'll get into that in a second um, once we go through these last two players. But it was either I sell him now and get a decent transfer... 40 million, I'd say that's pretty decent, um, or I wait, try and get him on a new contract, which just wasn't happening at all, um, in the summer, in pre-season, and if that didn't happen, I'd have to sell him for a lot, a lot less, to be honest, probably about half of that, I would assume, um, and if we couldn't sell him, um, and we waited until January, we'd basically lose him on a free transfer, and that's actually happened to one of our players. Um, I'll get into that in a second. Uh, the other players we let go out and loan uh, was Senk Viral. He's a player we got on a free transfer, Turkish regen. Looks pretty decent. We let him go out on loan to Keiko Rizespor in Turkey, in the Turkish First Division. Um, not too sure what he's going to do. We'll have a look how he performs this season. Um, and the other player was Efrain Morales, who is a player I brought in. Um, didn't get a work permit, so we had to loan him out to Barrow. The players we brought in, of course, Diacate. I mentioned him in the previous episode that we had a deal set up with Napoli to bring him in. Looks very good. Hasn't really done too much so far, um, but I have been playing Zukovic over him a little bit more. He's only played the one game, and that was coming off the bench. Um, he did start a cup game and didn't play too well in that either. We then brought in Lawrence Patton, who was another guy I had a deal set up with. Um, just basically, he was a 16-year-old regen when I signed him. Looks alright, nothing too great. Not going to be a world beater by any means. Um, he's wanted by a lot of championship clubs on loan. I'm not too sure about that. We then signed Zerdan Shakiri from Bayern Munich for 9.5 mil. Um, obviously, he can play all along um, the forward roles. Um, and he'll be playing on the left, if he performs, of course. Um, bit hit and miss. But he does look like a very, very good player. 100 caps for the Swiss national team, for Switzerland. 28 years old, bit of a risk. He was transfer listed, so we brought him in. The next player we brought in was Nathan Redmond from Manchester City for 11.75 million. I was quite happy with this guy. We got him on 70k wages, which is down from, I think he was on 115 um, as you can see, he's a very good player, very, very good pace. Be playing out on the left as our inside, fo inside forward over there. Of course, we sold Bernard, so we've got a little bit of room there. Redmond will be our starter, um, and we'll have Eckhart coming off the bench. We then brought in Emmanuel Mamana from Corinthians for $10 million up front. Um, you guys will probably have heard of him before. He is a bit of a, a wonder kid when the game starts. He does look very, very good. Um, but his first few games haven't been too great. Um, I, actually, he didn't perform too poorly in his first league game. 6.9 is not bad by any stretch of the imagination. And the final player we brought in is the guy I mentioned before, Efrain Morales. We brought him in for 500,000. Looks like a very decent regen, not going to lie. He looks quite good. 17 caps for the Honduran national team. Um, and we'll basically just see how he develops and pray to God that he gets his work permit. So that's basically all the transfers we did. Uh, the other thing I have to mention is... Um, let me go into my squad here. Kalichi Ihenacho has refused to sign a new contract with me, 
and he's joining Leverkusen on a free transfer um, at the end of the season. So, yeah, that happened. Really disappointed with that. He was a player I put a lot of faith into. You know, we bought him. I think we bought him for yeah, twelve million. I paid for him. Um, he's repaid. No, nah, he hasn't really paid anything to be honest. He hasn't finished a season season with a seven match rating or above. So that's quite poor. His highest season goal goal scoring rate was twelve. Um, and a lot of you guys in the comments early on in the series kind of said that to me. You said auspicious. He's not as good as you probably think he is. Maybe you should look to bring someone else in. Um, of course, I did eventually do that. Um, but now he's going to go on a free transfer, and that really pisses me off. Um, another thing to mention, we are bringing in a few players um, on Bosman free transfers ourselves. Of course, that happened, and then I kind of thought, oh, well, I may as well check it myself. Um, another player we're bringing in is Alexander Alvarado, who is a very, very good Costa Rican regen. Another centre-back, um, but he can play more of a ball-playing ball, uh, ball playing defender, sorry. Um, and he's got very, very good physicals. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. He looks quite good. 23 caps for the Costa Rican national team. He is um, currently at Vitoria, but playing on loan at Santos Laguna in Mexico. Yeah, so an 18-year-old with 23 caps is pretty decent. Um, contract rejected. Oh, okay. Well, he's not coming yet. That's really weird, because I thought he accepted my contract offer. Um, so yeah, we'll have to sort that out, but I'm very, very happy, and I think we'll quite easily get him. Um, but anyway, we brought in, oh, we signed a contract for Alan Halilovic, the uh, Croatian player. Um, he's basically just going to be another player to play out on the left, uh, sorry, on the right wing as an inside forward. Of course, he's got 17 caps for the national team. He is at Barcelona currently, um, and they're underutilizing him. Um, so yeah, we'll bring him in. Should do decently, hopefully. If not, we can sell him on for a, quite a decent profit, I would assume. Uh, the other player we're bringing in is Ravel Morrison. Basically just a center mid backup. Nothing too outstanding. Um, he looks quite decent for a central midfielder. 27 years old, so he's quite old. Um, but he definitely won't be starting every game first season, uh, first team, sorry. Um, Savage is a guy we've had a deal to bring in for quite a while. Not exactly developing too nicely, but he's only 15 still. And Kevin Trapp is the final player we're bringing in. Uh, Romero is actually, his contract's running out, so we need another goalkeeper. Kevin Trapp from PSG um, looks very, very good. Or at least a solid backup, if not first team goalkeeper, because I'm not too happy with how Chesney is going. He is... I think he might be costing his games, to be honest. Um, so yeah, that's basically every tr bit of transfer activity we need to go through. Uh, we're getting to the fixtures now, which are absolutely horrible. Um, but anyway, of course, the previous episode was the loss to Watford. We followed that up with a 1-0 loss to Leicester. Um, as you can see, things not going our way at all. A Nick Hurst own goal and then Cohen Myers getting sent off in a game we dominated. And, um, yeah, this kind of happened quite a lot. We lost games that we didn't deserve to, um, and it just kept on happening, basically. We then drew to Sheffield Wednesday, nil all. Um, Wednesday are actually doing really well this season. Virgil van Dijk with an 8.4, Sakai with an 8.4 as well. Um, defenders played quite well, and obviously kept a clean sheet there, which has been, you know few and far between. We then lost to Derby County. Of course, we've got a bit of a rivaled history in this series with them. Uh, Zukovic opened the scoring. As you can see, we've conceded two goals from three shots on target. It's pretty much happened in every single game, and I can't stand it when that happens. I really can't. Tom Ince and Mpuku getting goals for Derby there. We then got battered 3-0 by Newcastle at St. James's Park. Craig Dawson Christian Tello and Wilfred Bonney, in a game that they actually, you know, I mean, 3-0 was a bit of a flattering result for them, um, as we didn't, you know, play too poorly, but, yeah, it was kind of even, but they, they got the win and just looked a lot more um, comfortable than we did. Uh, we then lost 2-0 to Liverpool, Firmino, and, of course, our former player, Nathaniel Klein. Again, two goals, three shots on target. We had more shots, more shots on target, 
and more possession than them, and of course we lose once again to them. Yeah, sensational. Um, we did... Whoop, where am I at? Did I just go... I just... No, oh, anyway, I don't know what happened then. I just jumped about three fixtures. Sorry, after the Newcastle game, we managed to pick up a win against Nottingham Forest. A 1-0 victory. Juan Aturbe with a penalty in the 26th minute. Um, and, of course, they didn't have a shot on target. And, uh, yeah, Sakai picked up a 9 match rating. Pretty impressive. We then managed to get a draw against Manchester United. one all, pretty decent result, I'm not going to lie. Rafinha opened the scoring for them. And Van Vortusen got us a goal pretty late on in the 87th minute. Um, and Eckhart picked up the uh, Man of the Match award with an assist. So, pretty decent. As you can see, the stats were pretty even. So, I guess a draw is kind of a, a fair result. We then got battered, absolutely destroyed, I should I should say, by Man City. Harry Kane with a brace and Baldy Keita, or Keita, um, on the score sheet there as well for them. Um, and as you can see, we only had one shot on target the whole game. Dominated possession, but it's Man City. Um, then was that Liverpool game with uh, yeah, the absolute jammy result. Um, we bounced back and got another win, though, in the FA Cup third round against Joey Barton's Wigan Athletic. And, of course, Mikado. I kind of just put some players in that I thought um, would basically cost us the game and I might lose my job. At this point, I was really quite upset at how things was, you know, things were going. And I thought to myself, can I actually get myself out of this slump? We got the win. Mikado, on his debut, got us the opening goal. Eckhart, one of the other youngsters I put in, um, also got a goal for us. Um, they got one back through Hugo Almeida. Um, but if you look at the, the other players in the team, like Emeterio, he hasn't been first team because Sakai has been playing um, amazingly. But he picked up man of the match. Uh, Cho Bum Suk also started this game, got his debut, played the best out of all the defenders with a 7.4. Uh, Rodriguez starting to get game time because um, at this point I was, quanti well, I was basically going to sell um, Katembe for the right price. Um, and it was just a matter of that. So I tried to get Rodriguez some more game time so he can, um, yeah, get used to playing the position. Hurst, he's kind of become a bit of a first-teamer because when yama has been a bit underwhelming. Ogun B um, came in to play to play this game. As I mentioned, Mikado, um, Eckhart, and Diakite, uh, Diakate, sorry, um, started his first game for the club, and then we put these players on a bit later on, and they all performed poorly, so... Yeah, not a bad result. Get it gets us into the next round, which is today's live com. We then followed that up with a nil all draw to Everton. Again, a pretty decent result, but as you can see, they only had one shot and target the whole game. We only had three, to be fair, um, but we probably deserve to win this game. Sakai, again, with the Man of the Match award, um, 8.5, which is outstanding. For some reason, my right wing back always plays well. Always. The left... Not so much, but the right always does. I don't understand why. I guess, uh, I, just, I can't even try and explain it. We then got battered by Fulham, who were in, who were in 19th at this point. And this result is the result that basically is putting me into the very insecure job security. So, of course, Adam Lalana, a former Southampton player, gets himself a brace and puts them 2-0 in front. We get one back through Zivkovic, and then Emerson Hindman, who a player a player I actually have on my short list, manages to score the goal against me. And of course, we have to wait for the highlights to load for whatever reason. Uh, we also had Nick Hurst get sent off in the 89th minute. So whatever that make of that what you will, but yeah, you know, the game was already lost at that point. So yeah, not too worried about that. Again, we probably shouldn't have lost. At least a draw in that case would be fair against Fulham as well. Like we can get a draw against Everton, but then we go away to Fulham and we get battered three one. The next game and the final game I just played well I actually played it last night because I had to, had to stop playing. I couldn't record an episode. I was just I was tired, I was fuming. Really didn't want to uh to make the episode last night. Um of course it was Christmas Day for us Australians, but anyway. Um yeah, the Chelsea game, we lost 2-1 at home, um, as you can see. Morata opened the scoring in the fourth minute. Zivkovic got it 1-all. 
I thought we were going to hold on for the draw, and Alvaro Morata scores in the 90th minute. Could not believe my eyes, but there you go. They did have 10 shots on target, so for them to score two, I'm not exactly unhappy with when you have Liverpool scoring two goals and three shots on target. Um, when that happens, I just, yeah, I can't stand it. Anyway, that's the fixtures for today. Um, well, between episodes. Um, let's get to today's live com against Reading. Not the most exciting fixture in the world. Um, but we've actually never lost to them, so today could be a first. Hopefully not. I would like to keep my job. I honestly would. I don't want to lose this job. I've enjoyed the series so far up until this point. Let's just say that. Alright, so we're going to... Oh, another thing to mention, I've actually tweaked the tactic a little bit. And, um, yeah, we've got Zinkovic up front, Redmond. The inside forwards have now been changed to support. Um, make of that what you will. Of course, Balich is now the starting central midfielder again because Myers is gone. Um, Emeterio will probably change him. Yeah, we'll change him for Sakai because Sakai is just a bit better. He's been our best player the whole season so far. Um... Yeah, Rodriguez at left back. Uh, Mamana will start alongside Van Dijk, Tom Aguila. Hurst will also start. We've got Carrasco, Redmond, and of course Zukovic as a poacher up front. I'm just going to pause the recording here, guys, for a second because I have to check something out. Alright, sorry about that. But uh, yeah, let's get into the game. I mean, we basically need to win and get some decent results in the next four games. So this one's basically a must win, because if I don't get a result here, I wouldn't really expect to keep my job, to be honest. Um, I'm going to tell the boys I expect a win. We'll try and get them fired up a bit more for this. Just let them know that I have faith in them. It's not exactly doing anything too special for them either, which is worrying. If I was manager for the whole the whole you know season, if I don't get sacked, I very easily think I could get us out of the relegation zone. I don't I don't really think that's going to be a problem for us by any means. But we've started well so far, dominating possession, had a couple of chances. Come on, boys. Need a big performance from them today. Of course, we spent a bit of money. We spent over 30 million. And it's 1 0. Got to be shitting me. First shot on target. Oh, I can't. Oh, it's been disallowed. That was really weird. They disallowed it after the highlight? Anyway. Whatever that means, I've never really seen that happen before, so... Yeah. Okay, so we're approaching half-time and nothing's really happened apart from that disallowed goal. Um, they've had more shots than us. I just can't seem to get my strikers to score goals. I think that's my main problem. Like, we've got Zikovic, who, in my eyes, is pretty much a world-class striker. He's not far from it. But I just can't get him to score. What do I have to do? Do I have to go two up front or something? That's what I'm leaning to at the moment. I'm leaning to maybe two centre backs, two wing backs, three central midfielders, and then two up front. I feel like that could be a half decent um, tactic, but it's just, this tactic has worked for me in the past. It, Maybe not massively, but we have gotten some decent results. Of course, I have changed it as well. I have to, you know, factor that in a little bit. Why is this guy's name in capital letters? Anyway. Might look to make a substitution here. Who's playing poorly? Balic is playing really badly. Mamana's not having a great game either. <laughs> Neither is Tom Aguila. Sensational. Okay, we'll we'll get Balich off. And we'll just leave it at that, I think. 
don't exactly want to change my defense. Because I think that'll do more harm than good. Ogun, Ogun B, he's got 20 passing. He should be able to pull some strings from the midfield. At least I hope he will be able to. I, come on, boys. We've got to nick a goal here. I don't really want to replay. This is going to make things harder. Let's give us another fixture to worry about. Come on, boys. Nick the late goal. Let's bring Deer Carte on. Carrasco is playing really well. So is Sakai once again. We just can't. We can't get anything. We've just got. That, that was like there was no highlight in the whole second half except for now and there's 30 seconds left I don't exactly think we're going to score a goal here by no oh, we might We've got a chance Hurst, Redmond, penalty ref no Rodriguez 13 seconds left oh Sakai's in behind can he cross it will he cross it no, he won't. Lovely. Okay, so that's the end of the game. A nil all draw. By no means was that an exciting live com for you guys. I am very sorry about that. Um, yeah. I'm going to tell the boys are unlucky, but that was a poor result. I'm not going to lie. Uh, once again, dominate possession. But what's the point in dominating it if you're not actually going to win the game, eh? It's not much point, so... Basically what that means is we are going to be having a replay of that game. Of course we'll also be away from home now, which is just sensational. Um, Carrasco, man of the match. And um, yeah, there's another fixture to worry about with the uh, players potentially lacking match fitness. And if you look at the recent results between myself and Arsenal, we've actually won the last three games. Okay, so that's promising. Oh, lovely. Oh, at least those games have been pushed back slightly. Actually, the Tottenham game's been pushed back probably about 8 or 10 days, so that's really good. We've got Reading and then City, so it's kind of changed things. Uh, the board is still very unhappy with me, so yeah, that's going to wrap this episode up, guys. Um, I'm not going to ask you to leave a like because the season's just Actually, the whole series has kind of turned to shit, um, and that's on me. Um, by all means, give it a like if you want to, but I'm just, I don't deserve it, really. Um, another thing to mention before I leave you is there will be a new series coming fairly soon. Um, I haven't actually started recording it yet, um, but expect the first episode or two to be out within, or maybe just before the new year. Um, I'm going to try and release it around, around New Year's Eve, around then, New Year's Day maybe. We'll see how we go. Um, but yeah, that's it for this episode, guys. Hope you join me for the next one. Hopefully, there will be a next one. Well, there, of course, will be. If we do get sacked, I will make an episode and show you guys what happened. And uh, yeah, give us... Well, I'll go through a brief rundown of our you know, career as Southampton manager. If it happens, we could always turn things around. Have faith in me. Even though I don't really have it myself. Anyways, goodbye guys.